let's take a look at how we can classify a system of equations by graphing. So notice they tell us to graph the equations and then it says which describes the equation the system of equations. So notice it asks whether it's inconsistent, consistent, dependent, or consistent independent. So this is another way of describing what's going on in the graph. So this is another way of talking about how many solutions. Remember we saw that if the lines intersect, that it had one solution, and that that one solution was the intersection point. If that happens, another way to describe it is to call that consistent and independent. Independent meaning they're two different lines, consistent meaning we get a solution. Remember, another possibility was that the lines are parallel to each other, meaning they never intersect. When you get parallel lines, we talked about how that means that there is no solution. Another way to describe that is to call it inconsistent. And the third possibility was that when we graphed a line, we wound up with the exact same equation, which put the same line on top of itself. So we said that this was infinitely many solutions since every point on that line is actually a solution to both equations. Another way to describe that is to call it consistent since it does have solutions, but dependent, meaning that they're the same line. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look at our systems of equations. If I want to graph the top line, notice my equations are in slope-intercept form. I know that because they look like y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to start by plotting my y-intercept. For the top equation, my y-intercept is positive 4. So on the y-axis, my first point is going to be up at 4. Now from there, I want to count my slope. So slope is always the number in front of x. In this case, it's negative 1 and 1 fourth. Remember, it's easier to count your slope if you turn that into an improper fraction instead of a mixed number. So I'm going to leave the negative out front, and then I'm going to turn 1 and 1 quarter into an improper fraction. So I can say 1 times 4 is 4, plus the 1 on top gives me 5. So that's the same thing as negative 5 fourths. And the reason that's helpful is now I can count it thinking rise over run. I can go down 5 and over 4. So from my y-intercept of 4, I'm going to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, oops, 4, 5, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, now let's take a look at that bottom equation. The bottom equation has a y-intercept of negative 4, since that's the number at the very end. So I'm going to start by putting, by plotting negative 4 as my y-intercept right on that y-axis. Again, I have a slope that's a mixed number, negative 3 and 1 quarter. So I'm going to convert that to an improper fraction. So the easiest way is to leave that negative out front and then say, okay, 3 times 4 gives me 12, plus the 1 on top is 13 out of 4. If I had room to go down 13 and over 4, I could do that. It doesn't look like I have room to go down 13 on my graph. Remember, you can put the negative either place, on the top or the bottom. So instead, I'm going to go up 13, and instead of 4 to the right, I'm going to go 4 to the left. So up 13, left 4. Okay, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, left, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I can see that these lines are intersecting. So intersecting lines that have one solution, we can describe them as consistent, meaning they have a solution, 
and independent, meaning they're two different lines. Okay, I'm going to graph these two lines. My top one is y equals negative 4x minus 2. They're in slope-intercept form, so I can see my y-intercept is negative 2. So on the y-axis, my first point at negative 2. And then from here, I'm going to count out my slope. My slope is negative 4. So as a fraction, that's negative 4 over 1. So I'm thinking rise over run, and I'm going to go down 4 over 1. So down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. Now let's take a look at the bottom equation. My y-intercept is negative 9. So on the y-axis, my first point is down at negative 9. And then negative 11 as a fraction is negative 11 over 1. Since I don't have room to go down 11 and over 1, instead I'm going to group that as 11 over negative 1. Remember the minus can go either place on the top or the bottom when it's negative. So that tells me to go up 11 and left 1. So I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, left 1. Okay, again, I have intersecting lines. That means they are consistent, they have a solution, and independent, they're different lines. We have y equals 3.5x plus 9. So starting at my y-intercept, 9. And then to use that slope, it's going to be easier to make it an improper fraction. So 3 times 2 is 6, plus the 1 gives me 7 over the denominator of 2. So 3.5 is the same as 7 over 2. Now normally, I would go up 7 and write 2. But I'm going to run out of room to, to do that on my graph. So I can reverse both numbers and go down 7 and left 2. Now normally we reverse it when we have a negative, but think about this for a second. If I, go, if I reverse both of them and go down instead of up and left instead of right, doesn't a negative divided by a negative equal a positive? So if I reverse them both, going down and left is essentially the same thing as going up and right. So down 7, left 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 down, left 2. Okay, now let's take a look at the bottom equation. y equals negative 2x minus 2. I'm going to start at my y-intercept of negative 2, so on the y-axis going down to negative 2, and then I'm going to count out my slope, which is negative 2, or as a fraction, that's negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to count that out by going down 2 over 1. And these lines are intersecting, so I would describe them as consistent and independent. Okay, let's take a look at these two. On my top equation, y equals one-third x plus four. My y-intercept is four, so I'm going to start here on my y-axis. And my slope is one over three. So to count out my slope from my y-intercept, I'm going to go up one and over one, two, three, right? Thinking rise over run. Now let's take a look at the bottom equation. y equals 1 third x minus 7. So my y-intercept is negative 7. I'm going to go to negative 7 on my graph. And then my slope is 1 over 3 again. So that tells me to go up 1 over 1, 2, 3. So taking a look at it, these lines appear to be parallel. And if you look at the two equations, notice they have the same slope. Anytime you have the same slope and different y-intercepts, your lines are going to be parallel because the slope describes the direction or the angle of that line. Okay, so let's make a little note. Same slope with different y-intercepts means that our lines are parallel. I'm going to use our math symbol here for parallel lines. Okay, so remember, parallel lines have no solution. Since they have no solution, another way to describe that is inconsistent.
Okay, so graphing our top equation, y equals one and a quarter x minus nine. I'm gonna start at my y-intercept of negative nine, and then I'm gonna turn my slope into a fraction, one and one quarter. If I turn, well, I mean an improper fraction. So one times four is four, plus the one on the top gives me five, all over four. So one and a quarter is the same as five over four. So that tells me for my slope, I'm gonna think rise over run and count up five over four. So from here, up one, two, three, four, five, over one, two, three, four. For my bottom equation, I have y equals one and a quarter x minus one. So I'm gonna start at my y-intercept of negative one. And this is the same fraction I just saw. So one and a qu one quarter we said was five over four. Same thing here, it's one and one quarter, so that's gonna be up five and over four when I count out my slope. Now again, my lines are parallel, which should make sense because we said in the last problem, when the, when the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are different, we're gonna wind up with parallel lines. And that's exactly what we see here. Parallel lines never intersect so they have no solution. Another way to describe that is inconsistent. Now, these, these lines, I'm not even gonna graph them because we saw this in the last few problems that when the slope was the same and the intercept was different, our lines are gonna be parallel. If you take a look at these two equations, our slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are different. That means my lines are parallel I've got no solution, and they could be described as inconsistent. Same thing here. I've got the same slope and different y-intercepts, so I know those lines are gonna be parallel or inconsistent. Again, same slope. Both have slopes of 1 half. They have different y-intercepts, so without even graphing, I know those are gonna be parallel lines or inconsistent. Let's take a look at this one. Our top equation, y equals one over nine x minus six. Well, our y-intercept is negative six. So on the y-axis, my starting point is gonna be at negative six. And then a slope of one over nine, if I think rise over run, tells me to count from my y-intercept up one over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now if I take a look at my bottom equation, it's not in slope intercept form because y is not by itself. I've got three y is equal to one third x minus 18. So to get y by itself, I would have to divide by three on both sides. Okay, and let's do a little work here. When I say one third divided by three, remember when you are, so this is basically saying one third divided by three, which is the same as three over one. Now our rule when you're dividing with fractions is to multiply by the reciprocal. So that means the first fraction stays the same Instead of dividing, we multiply, and the reciprocal means to flip. So instead of three over one, we would flip it to one over three. And then from there, we can multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So on the top, one times one is one, and on the bottom, three times three is nine. So that's gonna give me one over nine x, and then negative 18 divided by three is negative six. Now what I want you to notice is that this equation has the exact same meaning as the top equation, right? They're both equal to y equals one over nine x minus six. So if I were to graph this equation, it would be the same exact line right on top of itself. So the same line right on top of, each of itself, we describe that as consistent and dependent. It does have solutions, it has infinitely many, every point on that line, but 
It's dependent, meaning that they are the same line. 